same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who never fails is working all things out. You're working all greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and today I want to encourage you that God is our deliverer. I'd like for you if you have your Bible turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6. God says be strong and courageous don't be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God goes with you he will never leave you nor forsake you. You know it's a tremendous blessing that we can always find encouragement from the word of God and as we look to this scripture today in, in the chapter 31 of Deuteronomy, we find that three times God uses the phrase to be strong and courageous. Then God repeats that phrase in Joshua chapter 1 as he uh, instills in Joshua the ability to become a leader. Now, anytime the Bible uh, or God repeats himself more than twice, we know it's important. So it's very important for us today to take... Uh, heart from the message that we need to be strong and courageous. Now, in chapter 31, Moses is coming to the end of his life. And he realizes that we need to be strong and courageous. You know, God tells us that he wants us to be strong and full of courage. He doesn't want us to be filled with fear about the things that are 
taking place in the world about us. Uh, God is a reason. God's the reason why we can be strong. Uh, he never leaves us, and he will never forsake us. So in Deuteronomy 31, as Moses comes to the end of his life, uh, he realizes that it will be hard for the Israelites to continue uh, to minister and uh, be faithful to the things that God has called us. And without strong leadership, uh, God is concerned that the, the children of Israel will abandon them. For they have known God's goodness and mercy for a long time. You know, you've known God's goodness and mercy, but without uh, the blessing and favor of God and strong leadership, we can abandon our faith. Now, the definition of strong is to be able to withstand force or pressure. Of course, at this moment, people everywhere are experiencing a great deal of pressure on their line. But Jesus enables us to withstand the forces coming against us. In Ephesians 6 and 13, it says, Having done all to stand. Now, that means having done everything from the natural and the supernatural standpoint. In the natural, we're told uh, to uh, shelter in place, to wash our hands, to, to exercise, to only go out for groceries and medicine, and that's the natural things that we should do. Every person should be doing those things. But apart from that, we need to do the supernatural. Uh, that means that we need to pray and ask God for his mercy and favor upon our leaders and upon our country. In, in verse 14, uh, we're commanded to stand. Jesus, who is the head of the church, gives his commandment to stand regardless of the circumstances that we face around us. Now, many people have succumbed uh, to the pressures and the challenges that are placed upon their lives. But we can stand strong because we're strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We're strong because Jesus gives us the ability to stand. Verse 6 goes on to say, and courageous. Courage means not deterred or changed uh, because of danger uh, or, or pain. In Hebrews 13 and 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's important that we remember that Jesus is courageous. He is not deterred by anything. He was not deterred by the things that he suffered in order to secure our redemption. He was our Savior yesterday. He is our Savior today, and he will be our Savior tomorrow and forever. He, is our, he was our healer yesterday. He will be our healer today, and he will be our healer uh, in the future and forever. Now, life circumstances may change, and they have changed, but God never changes. The promises of God in the Bible are based on two things, God's faithfulness to his word and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. When you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God, the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to your life and every promise of God becomes yours. In Psalms chapter 91, verses 10 to 12, God promises to protect you. Let me say that again, that God who created heaven and earth promises to protect you. It says, uh, no evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. Well, we're currently facing a, a dilemma of sickness that could be called a plague, but God says he will protect you from it. And, and that Confidence comes from the fact that we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the blood that backs the promise of God. He goes on to say uh, that God will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. See, there's an unseen ministry of angels that's assigned to you as a believer uh, to keep you from harm. The word deter means to discourage someone from doing something by instilling doubt or fear of consequences. You know, Satan comes to discourage you by instilling doubt and fear into your heart. He wants to fill your mind with all the possibilities of things that could happen to you. He wants you to think that God's forgotten you or that the promises of God do not apply to you. You know, over the past several weeks, our lives have changed dramatically. Churches' services have been canceled. Uh, schools have been closed. Uh, people with small children have been coping with work and caring for their children. Some people are laid off, and we could continue to list a number of challenges that people are facing in their life right now. And these, are, these things are real. They're really happening to people, and they're difficult to deal with. Uh, but in this atmosphere, 
It's an opportunity for the devil to fill your mind with doubt and with fear. That's what he'd like to do. And if you dwell on those things, if you think on them constantly, those things could overwhelm you. Uh, and, and that's exactly what he wants to do, is overwhelm you with fear and doubt. You know, it's important that at this moment that we uh, think about the Word of God, even though everything may be coming, uh, crashing down in our life, as we think of the Word of God, the promise that God has made to His children, we find strength and encouragement. In Romans 8 and 28, it says, And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that's happening in your life or happening around you is the will of God. And let me say that again. Everything that may be happening to your family or to your neighbors or to the business that you work for or your business is not the will of God. But if we will pray, then God can cause even negative things uh, to turn out for our good. Now, you maybe if you become sick, remember this. God is your healer. He's able to heal you. If your job, you should lose your job, realize that God is not able to make all grace to abound towards you, that God can open the door of blessing and opportunity uh, in your life. So, so you shouldn't be filled with fear. God's Word says this, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Of course, today we know there are a number of generations. There's the builder generation. There's a, there is a, the boomer generation. There's the millennial generation. There's generations X, generation Y. There are all uh, number any number of generations on the earth. But the promises of God are the same to every generation. It says forever and ever. That that's eternal. That God is an eternal God. His promises are for eternity. Now that is found in Ephesians chapter three, verses twenty through twenty-one. So we need to focus our attention uh, on what God can do and don't spend all your time worrying or brooding over what might happen in your life. Focus on the promises of God. Put your attention on the things that the Word encourages us to think about, about in Philippians 4 and 8. I like what the message uh, translation has to say. It's uh, summing it up, friends. I'd say to you, do your best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, Noble, the best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put in practice what you've learned from me, what you've heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent blessings and favor. Romans 8, 31 says this, What shall we say then to these things? Well, how will we answer the challenges that we face to life? Like this, if God is for us, who or what can be against us? The Word says we're overcomers, we're conquerors. And so we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, that's Jesus Christ, and by the Word of our testimony. Our testimony should be what God's Word says about us. Remember this, when the Israelites left Egypt, there was not one feeble one among them. And God fed and kept them well for 40 years in the wilderness. That was the Old Covenant, that's the Old Testament, and, and the blessings and promises God made uh, to Abraham and his descendants. But we live under a much better common, uh, covenant that is backed by better promises and backed by the blood of Jesus Christ. See, God is for you. He, he wants to help you. He's for you as a believer, but he's also for the sinner. Romans 5 and 8 says this, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, God wants to give you a hope and a future. That all begins with receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says this, That if thou should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. You'd like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sin. I believe you raised him from the dead for my justification. I now receive him as my Savior. I believe you answered my prayer for salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, 
then you're a child of God and every promise of God belongs to you. 2 Peter 1, 4 says this, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through love. Well, if you've received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can uh, contact us by mail, Believers Worship Center, Post Office Box 326, Benton, 71006, zip code. Or you can drop us a, a, an email, Believers Worship Center at bellsouth.net. To the members of our church, I know that you're praying. And I would like to invite you to a special time of prayer this Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. You need to pray for our country, for our leaders, for medical workers, for the members of our church, and for an end to this virus. Again, at your home this Wednesday evening at 6, join us for a time of prayer, blessing and favor of God to bring an end to this virus. To the members of our church, if you'd like to mail your tithes or offering, you can do so by sending it to the church, Post Office Box 326, Benton, Louisiana, 71006. May God continue to bless and keep you safe. It's our prayer.
this is how 